What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your Azure AD, Entra ID, whatever it's called at this point, using groups to be able to authenticate your VPN users um, for on the FortiGate with FortiClient. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to launch, you're going to log into your Azure portal, wherever you have your Entra ID, you know, however, wherever that's in use, you're going to go over to portal.azure.com. Once you go to portal.azure.com, you're going to come up to the search bar at the top and you're going to search for enterprise applications. Go ahead and click it. And then we're going to click new application right here. And then we're going to click create, uh, I'm sorry, we're actually going to search. And then we're going to go ahead and search for 40 Hit enter. And then we're just going to use the pre-built one because it helps kind of with the URL, you know, the syntax of the URLs that you need to put in here. So we're going to go ahead and click this guy right here. And we're going to name this Ab VPN and click create. While that's creating, we're going to hop back over to our FortiGate and we're going to get the public IP for our VPN users, whatever public IP, you can use an FQDN as well. I'm not going to have an FQDN set up for this video, but my VPN users are going to be connecting to this IP right here. So I just want to copy that real quick. And then we're going to head over to user and authentication and then single sign on. And from here, we're going to click create new. And I'm just going to call this Azure. It's just the name of uh, the single sign on connection. And then I'm going to paste this guy, the uh, public IP in here. And I'm actually using a non-standard port for VPN. So I, you also need to go ahead and add that non-standard port in there as well. So the first thing I'm going to do before I head back to Azure is I'm going to copy this top line right here, this entity ID. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Pop back over to Azure. Looks like the enterprise application is somewhat provisioned. I'm going to click this single sign on right here. And then I'm going to click on SAML. Okay. As you can see, once we're on this screen, there are a couple of items that are required here for the basic SAML configuration. So I'm going to click the little pencil next to edit. And then that URL that I copied while we we're in the FortiGate, the entity ID is going to go here. So I'm going to click add identifier, paste that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on assertion consumer service URL. I'm going to copy that, pop back over to Azure, click reply URL, paste that in there. And then I'm going to paste that same text into the sign on URL. And then lastly, I need this logout service URL. And I'm going to paste that at the bottom. And then I'm going to click save here at the top. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and save. I'm going to click the X, exit out of here. And you should see everything that we configured right here. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to edit the attributes and claims. So we're going to edit that. And then kind of what I like to do is I like to just delete all of these additional claims. So we're just going to go ahead and delete these real quick. All right. So now that I have all those deleted, I'm going to go ahead and add a new claim. And I'm going to call this username. And then for the source attribute, I'm going to type in user dot user and select user dot user principal name. And I'm going to click save up here at the top. Okay. So we have username with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and also add a group claim and we're going to go ahead and select all groups, click on advanced options. And then I'm going to select this customize the name of the group claim. And I'm just going to type in group. Okay. So it should look just like this. All right. So we're going to go back one step. All right, we have our username and group right here. And for the same certificates, we need to download the certificate base 64. 
I've been unable to get it to work with the raw. You know, I've had issues when I first kind of started doing this with that one. I haven't tried any others. I know the base 64 works. There's probably methods to get the other ones to work as well, but we're going to go ahead and just download this one right now. All right. And so we have our links here at the bottom that we're going to need to configure on the FortiGate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the Microsoft Entra identifier link, the one in the middle, copy that one to the clipboard, and then I'm going to head back to my FortiGate. All right. So once we're on this screen, it's the one that we left off on. We're going to hit next. And for the type here, we need to fill in our identity provider information, which are those links that we just kind of looked at, at on the Entra side. I'm going to go ahead and have another paste my entity ID. I'm going to come back. I'm going to copy my login URL. I'm going to paste that here. Log out URL, copy that, paste that guy in here. And then for certificate, what we're going to do is I need to import the certificate that I just downloaded from my device. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click upload. I'm going to find the certificate that I downloaded. I'm going to click it. I'm going to upload that here and then I'm going to click OK. Would you like to select a new entry? Yes. If it doesn't ask you to select it, just make sure you select the correct certificate. And for additional SAML attributes, we're going to type in username here and group here. We're going to click submit and our Azure single sign-on should be ready to go are almost ready to go. We're going to head back to the Azure portal because we've set up SAML single sign-on, but we have not assigned any users or groups to it yet. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go back here. I'm going to click on users and groups over here on the left. I'm going to add a user group where it says none selected. I'm going to click that. And this, I'm the only user in my lab environment. So I'm going to go ahead and select my name right here. And then I'm going to click assign over down here at the bottom. So with this, any group or any user that you assign to this enterprise application will be able to authenticate, at least in the way that we're going to set it up for this. So just make sure, you know, this is an important step. It, it won't work if you don't have any users assigned here. So we're going to pop back over to the FortiGate. And we're just going to make sure our VPN is enabled and set up. And we have to add that user, we have to add a user group here at for our SSL VPN settings in order for our user to authenticate and be mapped to a portal. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna head back to user and authentication and we're gonna user groups and actually have a VPN group already created, but actually, you know, we'll just create a new one for, for this. So we're gonna call this the lab VPN group. And I'm going to select for remote groups. I'm going to click the add button. And then I'm going to select my Azure SAML remote server. Click OK. I'm going to click OK. So now we have a user group associated with that remote authentication server. So we should be in business. I'm going to hop back over to my SSL VPN settings. And then I'm going to create a new user portal mapping. I'm going to select the user group that has my Azure single sign on server attached. And then I'm going to assign my main portal, just a basic full tunnel VPN so that it can grant it access. And don't be fooled by clicking OK there. It's not saved. You have to click apply down here at the bottom. OK, so I should be completely ready to go and log in on the VPN. So I'm going to do that now. So one of the things I forgot to mention, and because we created a new group, I, uh, I had some issues connecting when I hopped over to my other device. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead before I showed you that um, I had this group created ahead of time, but we created a new group. So I'm going to go ahead and you have to have a firewall policy referencing the group in order for your device to connect. 
So just kind of a little pitfall there. And maybe it'll help, help you guys if you're running into an issue as well. But the connection will not take place unless you have that group referenced in a firewall policy. So I'm going to go ahead and add the group that we created, Lab VPN group. Click apply. And now I'm going to go switch over to my other device and connect. All right, so now I'm on my other device. Um, I'm using a laptop that's connected to a mobile hotspot because for the client and for the gate, there's usually issues uh, connecting to VPN or an external interface whenever you're inside the network. So um, also kind of be sure of that because I've run into pitfalls and issues, um, you know, hitting my head against the wall trying to connect when I'm like, oh, duh, you're inside the network and it's not going to work. So um, I have my VPN configured here. If you look at the connection at my IP, the ports, uh, I have check mark next to enable single sign on SSO. I'm going to go ahead and click SAML login. It's going to go ahead and prompt me for my username. Password. And my two-factor code. As you can see here, uh, I'm successfully connected with my Azure credentials. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and swap back to the other screen and show you just kind of the VPN user connected on the firewall. Yeah, and just to kind of show you um, back on the firewall what it looks like when a user connects, uh, I'm going to go ahead and you can see um, I have an SSL VPN monitor set up on my dashboard. If you want to add that and you're not seeing it on yours, you click this plus sign at the bottom here and you just search for SSL VPN and you just add this monitor to dashboard. And once that's added, you'll be able to see um, my Azure AD username. So the email address that I authenticated with and the group that we created. And it shows how long, you know, I've been connected and uh, the sesh, the current VPN session. So. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to make another video about how to force two-factor authentication every time a user connects in Azure AD with conditional access policies. And then I'm also going to do one where we specify um, group membership on um, like what group and we can assign different firewall policies depending on what group a user belongs to um, when they authenticate. So hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.